The last video with 10 random Cinema 4D tips was very well received. So here comes part two. Little shortcuts, little tricks can speed up our day-to-day -day work substantially. And in these types of videos, I share tips that really effectively worked for me. Before we dive into it, this video is possible thanks to Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for curious and creative people. All the classes are curated. Whatever it is you want to learn, there will be classes about it on Skillshare. As we're talking about Cinema 4D today, let's see what Skillshare has to offer on that topic. Hundreds of classes on Cinema 4D and Octane, Cinema 4D and Redshift, Cinema 4D and X Particles, Cinema 4D and whatever you want. Mograph, simulations, realistic environments, all that can be found on Skillshare. If you would like to explore Skillshare classes, join the membership for 15 a month or 850 a month if you're joining annual membership. Also, as usual, first thousand subscribers clicking the link in the video description will get two months free of premium membership. Head to Skillshare, type in Cinema 4D and look for yourself what the guys have to offer. We are getting back to our tips though that will help us to work faster. First tip comes in handy when you're working with quite complex scenes with a lot of elements in it. When it comes to animation, sometimes it's challenging to animate this scene properly in terms of speed. I have this uh, scene here and if I want to play through, the playback is really slow. Cinema 4D really struggles to play this real time. It would be extremely hard for me to judge the speed, the camera movements. It's impossible to evaluate it in real time without rendering the preview, the clay render. Really handy feature Cinema 4D offers is located here where, where you can see that icon of the film. Clicking on that uh, film icon here, I can uncheck all frames. With all frames checked, Cinema 4D is playing back each frame it's a strict command to Cinema 4D, but if I'll uncheck it, then Cinema 4D will try to play back the real speed of the scene, skipping the frame if necessary. And this can help you evaluating the speed and actual animation in your scene. Don't know about you, but I'm using it all the time. Tip number two is about managing your hierarchy and visibility of the object. We often create those nulls with a lot of objects around it. It's kind of our habit of cleaning up and organizing our scene. But sometimes we need to hide specific elements in that hierarchy, something from that folder. That way only these elements are visible. But then if this list gets really long, instead of clicking each individual uh, visibility marker, I can just control click these visibility markers and they will affect all the children as well, which is handy dandy. If you don't like to click each uh, dot individually, you can just alt click and it will affect two dots simultaneously. Next tip is about tracking. I'm not sure if this was the functionality of the tracker in Cinema 4D from the beginning, but I wasn't using it. So for example, how we usually track the footage in Cinema 4D, we open up the footage, we set up 2D trackers and let it auto track. It does its thing and then you scrub through your timeline and figure out that, oh, the footage was actually much, much longer and the movement was much more significant and long in there so the beginning frame markers are not enough they disappear by the middle of the footage what you can do is you can scrub through your uh, footage timeline and add markers where necessary and not only one type of markers you can you can change the options of the markers for example change the search pattern search uh, area and things like that and add different markers. This way it's almost guaranteed that any footage will be tracked. If you watched any of my previous tutorials, uh, especially really old ones, I used to use PF track tracking software. But since I figured out that Cinema 4D now can do this, I totally gave up any other third party trackers and I'm using Cinema 4D tracker only. Next tip comes from our junior artist, Jake. 
I was never aware of this and it's a huge time saver when you do it often. So let me quickly create a lot of objects, make it editable. So I have a null, cloner null and a lot of cubes under it. Imagine it's a big, big project with like hundreds of elements under that null. So usually what I was doing is right clicking the null and going to and going to select children, which will then select all the children. What Jake told me was that you can just middle click the null and it will select all the objects under it. So instead of two clicks, you're doing one click. It might sound like uh, nothing significant, but trust me, it's a huge time saver. Next step comes to timeline. Let me quickly animate these cubes. Go to window, timeline F curve, and here's our timeline. So if you've seen my animation essentials video, uh, these are handy for precise animation, for finessing your animation, crafting it and all that stuff. And uh, usually you would select a point and then start to manipulate it in order to avoid it moving in time. You would lock it and then just change the value and all that stuff. But what you can do is go to view, show, show min max values. I don't know if you can see them on the, on the screen, those dotted lines in there. You can grab that line and just squeeze or even reverse your animation without actually selecting the point. If previous tip was saving you a couple of clicks, this can save you like literally a lot of hours in your animation process. This is a big tip. Uh, next tip is sort of an update from my previous videos about workflow optimization in Cinema 4D. So previously we had to download third party tool to disable all the textures and it's sometimes really necessary when you're modeling when you're doing whatever you want to disable textures even to speed up your your viewport so now you don't need any third-party plugins you just click n and then you have a list of things that you can do with the viewport if you would click q it will disable all the textures for you. Now this method won't affect the renderers like Redshift or Octane, whereas the previous method I've showed, I showed in another video will affect renderers too. This one just disables materials in the viewport. Um, I'll link the previous videos in the video description. So if, you, so if you're interested in other cool tips, go check it out. Next tip comes handy in many different situations. We're doing many different tasks. Uh, we want to integrate 3D elements in photos. We want to know the exact camera lenses for the tracking processes and integrating uh, elements into our footage. And Cinema 4D have you covered. So if you right click on your camera, go to tracker tags and select camera calibrator, this is the tool that will help you match the lens on which the source was shot. So I'll just import the image in image tab in camera calibrator and go to calibrate. Keep in mind, you have to be in this camera looking through this camera. If I'll click the line, you'll see the line appeared and I'll just start dragging line across, across the sidewalk, which presumably will be my Z axis. So I'll just place a couple of lines there. And now if I'll shift click that line, it will start changing colors. I need the blue one because blue is Z axis. So all these lines will be representing my Z. And you already can see that Z vanishing point is solved. So camera already knows what the Z is. Now let's set up Y. Let's put one here. Let's put one there. Shift click them to green color because green is a Y axis color. Okay, all the markers are green now. All the vanishing points are properly solved. Camera focal length solved. Camera orientation solved. Camera position is not solved, but we really don't need it. Create a background object and then create a plane. And you already see, I didn't do anything. I didn't rotate it. I didn't orient it. It's oriented properly and it perfectly fit, fits the image. If I'll start to place cubes in there, for, for example, you can see that they are perfectly following the perspective of the photo. This camera calibrator tag is used all the time for many different tasks for whatever reasons. It's just, um, it's just one of those tools that you use all the time, but maybe by some reason you were not aware of it. Now you are. Next tip came to my mind 
because we're working with a lot of product visualization stuff and clients are sending our CAD models of their products, usually such data comes as a big mess. Let me quickly download some CAD model. This looks good. This one actually was converted properly, so all the pivot points are set correctly. But let's say this element, its pivot point would be here when imported by some reason. And then I wouldn't be able to properly animate it. In my early days, what I would do is I would allow the pivot control here and then I would manually place the pivot point where it's supposed to be. There is a way to speed up this process. It's called center axis 2. So what it does, it puts the, the pivot point to the center of the geometry. So if I'll click it, I have a dedicated button here. If you don't know how to put customizable buttons on your Cinema 4D interface, there is a video for that too. Link is in the description. It's called how to speed up your Cinema 4D workflow or something like that. So if you click it or you go to shift C and type in center axis two, it will put your pivot point to the middle of the geometry. And then if you need it to move somewhere else, because in this particular case, it's not in a perfect spot for animation purposes, then you can allow pivot point control and place it manually further. But at least your pivot point got transferred to your geometry. It's super handy. And when you're working with hundreds of elements in CAD file, you can just select all of them, center pivot point, and that will help you a lot. Next tip is kind of organizational. So let's say I have a cube, have a sphere, I'll put it here, and then I have a cone, put it here like a hat. And then I want all of that stuff to follow the cube like that. And then I want to subdivide it all. All of that stuff that I just did involved clicking, clicking, clicking and clicking and moving elements in hierarchy, which is all right. It's not, nothing wrong with it, but there is a faster way of doing these things. For example, if I'll shift click the sphere, it will automatically be created as a child of the cube and if i'll keep sphere selected and hit control and create cone the cone will be created on the same hierarchy level as the sphere and in the same position in fact as sphere which can be super useful as you can imagine usually when you create uh, geometry from the top menu of cinema 4d it creates it in the middle of the scene but selecting the desired element control creating another geometry will create it in the same place as your previously selected object and uh, then with the cube selected i can hold alt and subdivide it and it automatically puts my previously selected object as a child of that subdivision so these shortcuts shift create object control create object and alt create object will help you to speed up your hierarchy organization. Next tip, actually the last one, is kind of a continuation of my previous tip from the part one when I was talking about unified naming conventions. If you want to know more about that, uh, look up the first part of Cinema 4D tips. Today I want to talk about, about so-called tokens. These are short expressions that will help you not naming any of your renders at all, in fact, which can be handy. For example, let's say we have several cameras, several angles. I'll quickly create several cameras. With take system, you can set it up so that render will render each camera one by one. We're not going to go in depth about take system, but basically I'll create one two, three takes, call this one A, this one B, and this one C. I'll just assign A camera to A take, B camera to B take, and C camera to C take. And I will set up these markers, and now these takes are marked for a render. Then I'll go here, and in the name field, I'll click this arrow. It will prompt a lot of different token options, for example, I'll take, I'll choose take, and then I'll select where I want my renders to go. 
in this folder for example and then I'll go to render takes render marked takes because we marked them and you can see the names are assigned properly they are taking our take names this can be convenient when you're doing a lot of product uh, renders for example we have clients with different packaging stuff for let's say paints or perfume and those and those bottles those whatever vessels there are with different with a lot of different labels with a lot of different colors and we of course need to ma manually assign all those textures but then in order to avoid manual render of each version you can set up the take system and click render button only once and don't even need to name anything it will name the renders for you this is not a really exciting tip Andre A. Eh? yeah right okay i decided that i'll give you a bonus 11th tip vertex maps can be absolutely fantastic in texturing in different animations morphing whatever for many different reasons so you paint your vertex maps sometimes you need for certain effects you need actual geometry to be selected for example cloner needs a selection to put clones in certain areas of your uh, geometry previously that it was possible to transfer vertex paint to polygon selection using some python third-party scripts but now but now it's actually possible with cinema 4d native tools so i'll make a selection here uh, it's obviously empty now but i'll click use fields and drag my vertex map to the fields and i'll click restore selection here you go selection now took the info from vertex map and transformed it into actual geometric uh, selection and this can be used in cloner this can be used in many different scenarios here you go 10 plus one bonus one absolutely random cinema 4d tips for you guys in my opinion they are quite amazing they worked effectively for me and i hope they will serve the same to you this is it for today i will see you soon peace